This is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Topping our news today at noon with one day left until the election. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump focusing on getting last minute support in the battleground states today. And for Trump, that effort begins in Sarasota. The Republican nominee just wrapping up a grassroots rally at Roberts Arena. Supporters lining up early this morning to make sure they got a spot inside that arena. And ABC 7's Adam Cellini was inside there and joins us now live with more on what Trump had to say. Adam. Yes, yeah, Scott, he just left the stage out here and left this crowd energized. Sarasota has been good to Donald Trump. This appearance today, almost one year since his last rally in Sarasota. It was last November before the primaries, and he returns today one day before the election. Now, last year, 12, an estimated 12,000 people came out to the rally. Today, they had no trouble filling up the 4,500 capacity room here at Roberts Arena. Um, when he, once he took the stage, his message was many of the familiar topics repealing Obamacare, um, lowering taxes for the middle class, and be continuing a hard stance on Syrian refugees when taking office. He never mentioned FBI Director Comey specifically, but did say that Hillary is protected by a rigged system, which of course was met with cheers from uh, many of his supporters who were saying similar things outside. His main message, imploring people to go to the polls, make history, and make him uh, president tomorrow. That means tomorrow. You have one day to make every dream you ever dreamed for your country come true. You have one magnificent chance to beat the corrupt system and deliver justice. Now, Trump's uh, next stop will be Raleigh, North Carolina, another swing state. Florida and North Carolina, no doubt huge for Donald Trump, must wins, some would say. It's two out of five total stops that he's making today around the country. A big push from Donald Trump on this last day before the election. For now, live in Sarasota, Adam Cellini. Scott, back to you in the studio. All right, Adam, thank you so much. We'll get back to Adam for more on uh, the Trump rally this morning and coming up in our second half hour of this newscast. Now, the race for the White House looking like a literal race today. Jam-packed schedules for both candidates. Hillary Clinton using big-name surrogates. Donald Trump blasting the FBI for clearing his rival again over emails. ABC's Elizabeth Hur is in Washington with more. It's a true battleground blitz in these critical final hours with Hillary Clinton leading Donald Trump by just four points in the new ABC News Washington Post poll. I'm really excited about uh, having a chance to make all these stops today. Clinton is staying on message, not talking about that blockbuster announcement from the FBI that has Trump back on the attack. Hillary Clinton should not even be allowed to run for the presidency of the United States. She shouldn't be allowed to run. Trump outraged the FBI's additional review of Clinton's emails ended with no criminal charges. In a letter to Congress Sunday, FBI Director James Comey writing, based on our review, we have not changed our conclusions that we expressed in July. Sources telling ABC News the new batch of emails contained many duplicates the Bureau already reviewed. With what's happening with our justice, our country is a laughing stock all over the world. They're laughing. Trump is now wrapping up a grueling campaign, hitting 10 states in the final three days before the election, while Clinton is heading to the finish line with help from star supporters and President Obama campaigning for Clinton as it gets down to the wire. Also joining the Obamas and the Clintons tonight, John Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen in Philadelphia. Trump, in the meantime, is set to hold his final rally in Michigan with his running mate, Mike Pence. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Washington. Well, Elizabeth, thank you. Some good news. If you still haven't hit the polls yet, the lines may not be too bad tomorrow. About half of all active registered voters in Florida have already cast their ballots. That's according to the state elections office. 6.4 million Florida voters in all have either voted early or through the mail. There are 12.9 million active registered voters in Florida. So far, Democrats have an 87,000 vote lead over Republicans in that early voting. 
And the NAACP is trying to help get more African Americans to the polls. Tomorrow, the Florida State Conference will have offices open in cities and counties throughout the state, including Sarasota, to help provide support to voters. They will offer rides to the polls and help with other needs. More than 1,000 volunteers are helping in that effort. And if you are planning to vote tomorrow, there are some things you should know before you go. The polls will open at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning and close at 7 p.m. in both Sarasota and Manatee counties. Before you head out the door, make sure you have a photo ID with a proof of your signature. Make sure all your voter registration information is correct and up to date. And if you don't know where to go, you can find your polling location on your Supervisor of Elections website in your respective county. All right, let's get a check on our weather now with meteorologist John Scalzi. Weather's not going to stop anyone from voting, huh? Yeah, no. Uh, good news is it looks like probably Louisiana and Texas will be the two places in the country, the entire country, where there might even be some thunderstorms wow. around. And so uh, fair weather will rain, it looks like, yeah. and temperate weather as well. So uh, no reason not to get out there and vote. Exactly. I think uh, there was one study that did show that uh, for every inch of rain that falls, you lose about... Uh, one or two percent of voter turnout. So, mm -hmm. should be good. Should be good. good. We I'm want, glad. We glad want everyone it. out there voting. Weekend was nice too. It was beautiful. Didn't yeah. turn out to be quite as cold nope. as anticipated, but it was a little drier and the humidity yeah. was a little bit yeah. better. And certainly the mornings were cool and crisp and nice. A uh, little bit of cloud cover to start the day off. From time to time, we'll be dealing with that cloud from time to time throughout the afternoon. High clouds for the most part, nothing that's a rain producer. And I think that cloud cover is, will be around. It kind of signifies the, uh, the little low pressure area and frontal boundary that we have back to the west and some of the blow off cloud cover from that moving across our peninsula. But look at radar. As I said, there's not a drop of rain falling from any of those clouds. Day planner showing another warm one here on the Sun Coast. We do have another chance at reducing those temperatures later this week. And we'll talk about the next front that's due to arrive here on the Sun Coast coming up in just a few minutes, Scott. Okay, John, thank you. An 18-year-old woman is shot and killed in Manatee County Sunday. Sheriff's investigators say it happened Sunday afternoon around 4.30. Now, along 4th Street East, a potential witness then took the victim, 18-year-old Mariah Good, to or Goody, to Manatee Memorial Hospital with gunshot wounds where she died. Detectives say they do not believe this was a random act. Anyone with information is, on, is asked to call the sheriff's office or you can call Manatee County Crime Stoppers and remain anonymous. That number is 866-634-TIPS. Manatee County Sheriff's deputies also investigating an attempted robbery and battery case. The victims were just walking through a parking lot along US 41 late last night when a man confronted them. Deputies say he tried to grab one of the victim's wallets, punching him in the face and knocking him down. Anyone with information should contact the sheriff's office. New at noon, an update on the diverging diamond project. On Wednesday night, crews will begin the work necessary to then shift southbound traffic on I-75 onto the newly constructed bridge over University Parkway. That work will begin with double lane closures at 11 o'clock Wednesday night and lasts until 6 a.m. Thursday. The on and off ramps to I-75 at University Parkway will also be closed Wednesday night at that interchange. Detours will be set up at Fruitville and State Road 70. Work on this diverging diamond project is set to be completed by the fall of next year. And some changes begin later this week for Manatee County public transportation users. Starting Saturday, Manatee County Area Transit will stop offering service to Lakewood Ranch. The State Road 70 bus service will end at the Walmart, which is just east of Interstate 75. Bus service on Manatee Avenue will begin operating every half hour instead of every hour. However, it will end service to Blake Medical Center. Several other route changes will also take effect on Saturday. You can see those new route schedules. They're all posted at MCAT transfer stations right now. All this month, we're taking a look at how the Suncoast will change over the next 20 years as part of our series of special reports called Suncoast 2037. The Suncoast is known for its sandy beaches and the communities that border them. While the coastline is part of the Suncoast appeal, it's also a cause for concern for local leaders. Some of the area's most valuable property, of course, is located on our beaches, but with climate change and rising sea levels, Sarasota City Manager Tom Barwin says that could all change. Well, that's, that's, that's really difficult to predict. I think that's a double-edged sword because as uh, more and more people become certain that climate change is a reality, those shoreline properties become a bit more of a risk. 
Barwin says Florida is the most vulnerable state to sea level rise in the nation. He says the sooner we can start looking at ways to combat climate change collectively, the sooner we can minimize the threat it could have on our community. ABC 7 business commentator Richard Stern joins us now with news of a huge rally on Wall Street to start the new week, Richard. And a huge smile as well, because need I remind our viewers that uh, the S&P, the Standard & Poor's 500 index, has been down for nine consecutive days, the first time that's happened since December of 1980, when Ronald Reagan had already been elected but not yet taken office, just to put that into context. And, oh, by the way, we're only down 3.1% over the, those nine days, but down nine in a row nonetheless, and the Dow down seven days in a row. Well, we're just about at Election Day. I think investors are saying, thank goodness this is almost over. Let's buy while we can. And we're having a heck of a buy on Wall Street today. Let's take a look at the numbers. Best we've seen in a very long time. There you see the Dow is up by more than 300 points. 1.7% at 18,191.90. That on very heavy volume of 589 million shares. The NASDAQ clearly the winner up 2.25%, more than 112 points at 5,158.57. That on volume of 729 million shares. And the S&P down nine days in a row, but not today. Up 40 points, almost 2% at 2,125.55. Well, if you do go and vote, or if you already have, if you've got a sticker that says, I voted, you've got a few things you can take advantage of tomorrow. Believe it or not, Krispy Kreme Donuts is giving away a free donut to anyone who says or can show that they actually voted. 7-Eleven is doing the same thing with free coffee. Bob Evans, if you have the right coupon, will give you 30% off of your meal tomorrow, whether it's takeout or whether you eat in the restaurant. And Gold's Gym. Whether or not you are a, a member of Gold's Gym or not, tomorrow you can go and use their facilities for free, assuming you have voted. So, Scott, uh, we're glad it's here, and uh, I'm very glad there are a few corporations around this country and locally that are rewarding voters in, in some kind of a way anyhow. Yeah, and it is almost over. That's the That's great right. news. We'll see you again at 5, and we hope these uh, huge gains stay throughout the day, right? I'm with you, Scott, absolutely. All right. We'll see you later. Thanks so much for the update, Richard. You're welcome. Let's get over to the kitchen now and check in for the first time with ABC 7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher. What are you cooking up for us today, Judy? Well, Scott, I have a reward, too, if you go and vote. You can make this in the morning and have a great meal as you're watching the election coverage and the results. I am making braised beef stew, but it's made with short ribs. Alton Brown, one of my culinary heroes, really nailed this dish. I've just added a few tweaks to it to make it a little bit heartier, but basically sticking with the same principle of searing off these wonderful short ribs. These are great. I got them over at the fresh market, and they, I called ahead, and they cut me these, so I, I knew exactly how many inches and the, how even I wanted them to be. But we're going to make a great paste that's actually going to go on this seared, short ribs and after we rub that paste it's slow and low in the oven for four hours and I'll show you how and then we'll make this wonderful sauce it's gonna be a little bit tangy and really good for tomorrow night so stay with me it's braised short rib stew in the menu today it's the Crystal Classic International Sand Sculpting Festival on Siesta Beach, November 11th through 15th, with 24 of the world's best sand sculptors. Bring the family for new hands-on kids activities, live music, food, sand sculpting lessons, and more. See SiestaKeyCrystalClassic.com for details. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, you'll always get the most for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And right now, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing, complimentary maintenance included at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. I owed the IRS $10,000. I owed the IRS $20,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. 
I called Tax Solutions Now and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. We saved our home and overcame the most powerful collection agency in the world. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 1-800-565-7740. That's 1-800-565-7740. Types of timber, cuts of meat, cooking times, temperatures, rubs, seasoning, sauces. You name it, they know it. That's what makes them who they are, Sonny's Pitmasters, and proud of it. Come get some baby back ribs at Sonny's Barbecue. On their own are paired with favorites like jalapeno cheddar hot links, fold or sliced pork, plus two sides and bread. Sonny's Barbecue, local Pitmasters in 68. Come see the Crystal Classic International Sand Sculpting Festival November 11th through 15th on Siesta Beach. Check out the Crystal Classic Party Tent produced by Siesta Key Chamber of Commerce and Moat Marine. Details including remote parking via SCAT. Visit SiestaKeyCrystalClassic.com. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Currently, uh, we're heading to another warm day. We're at 83 degrees currently with a dew point, though, that still feels so comfortable out there at 58. So even though our temperatures have been running above average and that cold front that came through really didn't cool us off all that much, it did draw down some drier air, and that certainly has helped the above average temperatures feel more comfortable. We have a lot of sunshine out there and some fair weather clouds as well. That'll be with us throughout the day. Wind's breezy. East at about 15, the combination of those low dew points and the breeze kind of adding to the comfort of the afternoon, I think. 78 degrees in Wachula, Arcadia at 78. Mayaka, the same. Parish ditto. Bradenton, 78. So is Lakewood Ranch in Northport. Punta Gorda comes in at 81. Sarasota, the hot spot at 83. 79 in Venice. Inglewood, you folks have 77. And on the Keys, it's uh, 76 degrees at Longboat. Probably similar all up and down the Keys. We are looking at the water vapor imagery here, and this is from Saturday afternoon. You can see this tan contour. That's all the dry air that came down after the frontal boundary moved through. That dry air led to just a beautiful sunny weekend, and it was uh, very nice indeed. Well, now, some of that dry air has been replaced by a little bit higher moisture content air, mostly in the form of high, thin clouds. Not enough moisture here to support rain showers, but certainly enough to bring us that thin layer of high cloudiness that will be with us for several days in a row. That cloudiness will finally be whisked away once this frontal boundary located back to the west eventually advances in our direction. So the thing is, the front will be moving through an area that doesn't have a lot of moisture in place. So when the front comes through, it'll probably come through mostly dry. The one fly in the ointment is whether or not an area of low pressure will develop amongst all these showers and thunderstorms that we see here in Louisiana. And if it does, then we'll have to kind of bump up the rainfall chances. So we'll have to kind of take this uh, day by day and see how it goes. Models are a, a, a little bit divergent on exactly what the final solution will be here, but I'm not going to change anything right now. I'll go with the fact that we'll probably get about a 20% chance of rain and that most of this rain shower activity that you see really extending out into the Gulf is going to fall apart and be mostly to our north as that front moves through here on Wednesday evening. Until then, we'll develop this uh, northwesterly flow to easterly flow, and we'll see a couple of showers kind of pop up along the other coast and move inland, but those showers just kind of tend to fall apart as they move across the spine of the state. We've seen that pattern before this, this year. Sun cloud mix, warm afternoon, and dry skies coming our way. We'll look for uh, quiet conditions, I think, today across the peninsula. Not much in the way of any kind of rainfall currently falling, and I don't expect to see a whole lot falling today. Northeast wind at about 15 kind of picks up a little bit this evening at 15 to 20, and the forecast for the week ahead looks good. After that Wednesday front moves through, we'll lower the temperatures a few degrees, keep it there into the weekend. Scott? All right, John, thank you. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention identifies the first U.S. cases of a drug-resistant fungal infection. The CDC reporting 13 people have become ill from 
Candida auris is sometimes fatal infection with a high likelihood of causing outbreaks in healthcare facilities. This deadly organism is difficult to identify using traditional lab methods. Four of the seven infected patients died, but it's not yet clear if their deaths were due to C. auris. The CDC director called the fungus an emerging threat, saying, quote, we need to act now, reminding healthcare facilities to strictly follow cleaning procedures. Well, as the days begin to get shorter, many of us are spending more time commuting in the dark. And for some, the combination of the darkness and the glare of oncoming headlights can cause some visibility issues. Some of the newer ultra-bright headlights are the most bothersome. These ultra-bright headlights did not pose any danger to our eyes because we're typically only exposed to them for a short period of time. But doctors say eye problems from light exposure are typically the result of prolonged exposure. While it is normal to notice some changes in our night vision as we age, there are some warning signs that should not be ignored. It's okay to have it occasionally at nighttime or more constantly at nighttime when you have a real uh, issue or a known issue going on. It's when it happens during the day and especially with a decrease in vision or a decrease in your visual field, you really, really want to get an evaluation by an optometrist or an ophthalmologist for that condition. Doctors say anytime you notice a significant change in your vision, either during the night or during the day, it's a good idea to have an evaluation by an eye doctor. A team of Japanese scientists say they have come up with a new way to lose weight by using virtual reality. Researchers at the University of Tokyo say virtual reality headsets can hack a person's senses. They claim the practice can reduce appetite, make low-fat foods taste better, and alter our perception of portion size. The system uses interactive computer graphic techniques to virtually increase the size of a food item. The inventor of the system says it can reduce the amount of food a person eats by 10 percent. So if the stress of the election is finally catching up to you, well, you're not alone. In a study by the American Psychological Association, more than half of Americans say the 2016 election is a source of stress. There are some things you can do, though, to combat it. Don't binge on political news. Instead, take some time for activities that recharge you. Try not to worry about the outcome of the vote and take action on issues that matter to you. The APA says voting itself can make you feel you are taking a proactive step, and that helps you cope with the uncertainty of what may be ahead. Still ahead on your Suncoast News, with a little over three weeks until Thanksgiving, local leaders are trying to keep families from going hungry this holiday season. I'll show you what they're up to and how they're helping out. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. And track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sunco Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus Bulbs. Trust the Plus. Visit Batteries Plus Bulbs today. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Sometimes, when the course is difficult, and you might take a step where you could fall, 
it's important to trust and ask for help. That's one of the most important things we learned at Tidewell's Teen Grief Retreat. On your grief journey, there are going to be difficult parts, but you have to trust in yourself and your support systems and know there are people around who will help you make it through. Tidewall Hospice. It's more than you think. An effort to help keep Suncoast families from going hungry this holiday season is underway. The annual Mayor's Feed the Hungry Thanksgiving Food Drive beginning today. Volunteers of the program will be collecting food and food gift cards to donate to those in need. Several drop-off locations have been set up in both Sarasota and Manatee counties. Since this program began way back in 1987, the program has collected and donated 200 tons of food and $2 million in gift cards. The food drive ends on November 18th. Get back to our kitchen now and see how lunch is coming along with Judy Gallagher. Judy, it sure smells good. Oh, Scott, this is one of those dishes that you're just going to love and will make it all winter long. So I've taken those great short ribs. And like I said, I had the butcher cut them evenly so you don't get a teeny one then a big one. And we're browning them. The key is kosher salt and go liberally with that. And then you want to make sure you brown it on every single side, not just front and back, but even those little sides you can stand up and I already have some brown so let's get started in this paste that we're going to make we're going to take a tube of tomato paste you can certainly use canned tomato paste it doesn't make a difference I just find the tube is so easy to work out of you can do about a half a cup of that now we're going to add apple cider vinegar about the same amount and Worcestershire so you see where I'm going with this tanginess I mean it's this is going to be a very different experience in a beef bourguignon where you're using red wine and beef broth. But I really think Alton has scored on this. Now we're going to add some Hungarian paprika. And again, pretty liberal on it. And some dried herbs, thyme, oregano. If you want to put in some rosemary, by all means, you can do that. And we're going to stir this up and make it a paste. What I do is I double the recipe for the paste with just the same amount of three pounds of short ribs is gonna be fine for the average. Now watch this. We're gonna take the brown short ribs and we're gonna roll it right into this paste. All that flavor, that tartness, and we're gonna put it into aluminum foil, okay? So again, roll it all the way around. Depending on what flavors you like, you might wanna put in a tablespoon of mustard and that's fine if you wanna do that or just Follow along with the flavors that you really like. You just don't want to make it too sweet because this is, you know, the short ribs after all. So my mom used to always love to have the beef flank in, those short ribs that you cook inside of like a beef barley soup. So she would have loved this recipe. So now what we're going to do is we have all these done. And this, like I said, is a hearty amount. Rub it really well. I'll save the rest of that paste for later. We're going to need it. I'm going to wrap it tightly in an aluminum foil, and it's going in a 200. It's going, excuse me, in a cool oven. I'll turn the temperature on 250. I'll wrap it a little bit tighter. Cool oven, 250, four hours. Come back, and I'll show you what we do next. The agents at SWC would like to show you pictures of all the homes that they've sold quickly for their clients. But there are just too many to show. Contact SWC today and find out for yourself. We just market your home better. Hi, I'm Chef Judy. Every Wednesday morning, I'll be with the chefs at the Publix Aprons Cooking School serving up the most wonderful dishes. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday on ABC 7's Good Morning Suncoast. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. An important message for Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you receiving all the benefits available to you? Do you know there is money available to lower your Medicare prescription costs? Now is the time to find the coverage that's right for you at the right price. The way to do that is to explore your options. 
You can spend hours doing that yourself, or you can call Health Markets and let us do the legwork for you, with no cost or obligation. We'll search a variety of plans from nationally recognized companies to find the coverage that's the best fit for you, at a price that fits your budget, and we'll do it at no charge to you. Plus, you may be able to save money on prescriptions. We'll tell you if you qualify. Why pay a penny more than you have to for an insurance policy? Let us find you the right plan at the right price and see if you qualify to lower your prescription costs. Put our free service to work for you at no charge. Call the number on the screen now to make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Don't wait. Call now. Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. Hello, I'm Jamie DiDomenico with Cool Today, Plumbing Today, and Energy Today. Here in the Sun Coast, taking care of people is more than a slogan. It's a way of life. On Tuesday, November 15th, do your part and show that the Sun Coast cares. Come by the Sun Coast Blood Bank from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and donate one or more of these important items needed by local organizations, including a life-saving blood donation. For more details, visit suncoastcares.org. That's Tuesday, November 15th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Sun Coast Blood Bank. See you there. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Welcome back. Topping our news this half hour, almost one year ago to the day, Donald Trump came to Sarasota and Roberts Arena to start his campaign before the primary. Today, he returns just hours before the election of a presidential uh, candidate. Trump holding a rally before a packed Roberts Arena crowd in Sarasota this morning. And ABC 7's Adam Cellini joins us live with more on what the Republican presidential candidate had to say to his supporters. Adam. Scott, as you can see, that room uh, here at Roberts Arena has cleared since uh, about a half hour ago when Trump left the stage. But the 4,500 capacity arena completely filled with thousands more left standing outside. Trump choosing Sarasota as his last Florida stop in this presidential campaign. He's making four more later today, but um, the road to the White House certainly going through Sarasota for Donald Trump. Some of the people we spoke to in line today confidently telling us that they were going on their way to see the 45th president of the United States and on stage Trump equally as confident promising his supporters a victory party tomorrow. He also touched on several of the normal uh, regular policies that he's been hitting on lately such as cracking down on the Syrian refugees and of course repealing Obamacare. But what he did not address however was FBI director James Comey's statement he released yesterday absolving Hillary Clinton's latest email scandal. His supporters however weren't so tight lipped. It was in black and white that uh, uh, Hillary Clinton has certainly broken the law. Her activities are very criminal. She should be behind bars right now rather than later. Well, I think it's clear that there's a lot of corruption in Washington, and we need to put Donald Trump in there to make a change. I think that um, many people may, may be misled to believe that uh, he might have affected the ele election if, let's say, Hillary loses, but I don't think that it has any bearing on it. Now, while Trump's Florida campaign ends, so does the campaign merchandising. Uh, we spoke with a vendor earlier today who said Sarasota is going to be his last stop of over 300 rallies he's been to since last December, and he called this election cycle one of the most lucrative, if not the most, that he's ever experienced. Live in Sarasota, I'm Adam Cellini. Scott, back to you in the studio. All right, Adam, thank you so much. In other news, the nation's first female attorney general has died. Janet Reno was a former Miami prosecutor who famously told reporters, quote, I do, don't do spin, before being appointed as attorney general for nearly eight years during the Clinton administration. She faced criticism for her handling of the deadly raid on a compound in Waco, Texas, and the seizure of Elian Gonzalez. She was one of the administration's most recognizable and polarizing figures. I've always told people if they don't like what's going on in their government, they shouldn't stand on the sidelines and complain. They should be involved. And I think it's important in a democracy that people participate. 
After leaving Washington, Reno returned to South Florida, where she ran for governor in 2002. Losing in a Democratic primary, she died from complications of Parkinson's disease at her home in Miami. She was 78 years old. In Oklahoma, people living outside of Oklahoma City are cleaning up after a magnitude 5 earthquake hit the state overnight. The U.S. Geological Survey says the quake hit just after 7.30 last night central time, about 50 miles northwest of Oklahoma City. It was felt as far away as Kansas City, Missouri, and even Little Rock, Arkansas. 40 to 50 buildings in Cushing, Oklahoma, sustained substantial damage in this quake. I happened to look up and I, it, I swear it looked like the ceiling was about to collapse on me. It, the walls were shaking, the ceiling's moving. It's scary and still shook up about it. No major injuries were reported in this earthquake. Access to the worst hit areas is restricted as crews assess the damage. I did see one report, John, that they were looking at all the bridges around that region and most of them, all yeah. of them were so far have been checking out okay. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really think of Oklahoma as a big earthquake zone, no. but uh, in fact, Oklahoma, Kentucky, Tennessee, all have as high a risk, according to U.S. Geological Survey, as California. Mm. So it's a, it's a big it's a big problem in the United yeah, States. It is. And active volcanoes, Yellowstone National Park is an active volcano. That's right. We don't really think of that as you a know big one. Yeah. Big one, yeah. So we have our own natural hazards, geological hazards here in the U.S. as well. Um, Luckily, Florida doesn't have those issues. We have sinkholes, but we don't have those other geological issues, really. Um, looking at uh, some pretty quiet weather across the region right now. Some high clouds kind of streaming across the peninsula. But other than that, uh, I don't see much in the way of a rainfall chance today. Dew points are still very low beneath those clouds, which are coming through in a thin layer of our atmosphere. So not much in the way of a rainfall risk today or for the next couple of days, I think. We'll have uh, scanning radar showing pretty much that same picture, at least in our area, for the next several days. Daytime highs will be warm, though, coming in above average once again, even if the air is a little bit drier, thanks to that front that came through over the weekend. The, uh, the dew point values in the 50s making it feel pretty comfortable outside, but uh, if we could just lower those temperatures a little bit, I think a lot of people would like to see that happen, and maybe we will as we head into the second half of this work week. We'll talk about that in just a few minutes, Scott. All right, John, thank you. A kidnapping case turned multiple murder investigation. In South Carolina, investigators are trying to figure out if a man they have in custody could be responsible for more than half a dozen killings. ABC's Janai Norman reports as the search for more victims continues. Investigators in South Carolina could be dealing with a serial killer. While investigating the suspect accused of holding a woman captive, officials say Todd Kolhap dropped a bombshell confession about a 13-year-old cold case, allegedly admitting he gunned down four people in 2003. Sir, just understanding that the family's here, anything you wish to say at this time? Not at this time, sir. Cole Hepp is charged with kidnapping Kayla Brown, who disappeared in August, along with her boyfriend, Charles David Carver. Search teams are still scouring his nearly 100-acre property, where Brown was chained up by the neck and ankle, locked in a shipping container, and where investigators found Carver's body in a shallow grave, saying he was shot multiple times. Yes, calm. Um, he's remorseful. The seemingly successful realtor returning to his property over the weekend in an orange jumpsuit, reportedly showing investigators two more graves on his property. In one, another body. There's supposed to be one more down here, but we're going to keep searching until we are positive that's it. Investigators are checking other properties Cole Hepp owned for evidence and going over any unsolved cases looking for possible connections. In the meantime, Cole Hepp is facing charges for that 2003 quadruple murder. Janae Norman, ABC News, New York. In California, the husband of a woman who went missing while out on a jog last week is now speaking out about what he thinks happened to her. Sherry Papini vanished Wednesday near her home. Her husband, Keith, says he first knew something was wrong after she failed to pick up their two young kids from childcare that afternoon. Her last text message to him asked if he was coming home for lunch. Her phone was later recovered on the side of a road. Phone, but she would never in a million years, you know, not pick up our children on the time that she normally would have. Papini says his wife was definitely taken against her will. Sherry is considered at risk due to the circumstances of her disappearance. A $50,000 reward is now being offered to anyone who can provide information that leads to her discovery. 
Jury selection is postponed in the federal case of a white man on trial for fatally shooting nine black parishioners at a Charleston church last year. 22-year-old Dylan Roof is charged with hate crimes, obstruction of religion, and other counts in the shootings at Emanuel AME Church. The judge is dealing with a motion in that case today. Once jury selection resumes on Wednesday, more than 500 potential jurors will be individually questioned by the judge. Eventually, 12 jurors and six alternates will be seated. Opening statements may not begin until after Thanksgiving. And in Georgia, a jury is hearing closing arguments in the trial of a man charged with murder after his toddler son died in the back of a hot car. Prosecutors telling jurors this morning that Justin Ross Harris intentionally left his 22-month-old son Cooper to suffer an unimaginable, horrible death in June of 2014. He said Harris, who was seeking sexual affairs with other women online, quote, loved himself and his obsession more than that little boy. Harris's defense attorneys will present their closing argument later today, trying to prove the child's death was just a tragic accident. All right, let's get back to the kitchen now. That Those short ribs sure look good, Judy. You're going to have a good lunch today, my friend. So after four hours of putting the short ribs in the oven, 250 degrees, but you don't turn the oven on until after they're in, you're going to take a knife or your tongs, and you're going to poke two holes, and you're going to get all that wonderful juice that's going to drip out. You're going to pour it in a bowl. You're going to let this short rib sit covered, and you're going to take the juice and put it in the refrigerator for an hour. Why? Because we want to separate the fat, just like you would in chicken soup or anything else. The fat congeals and comes to the top. Scrape all of that off except for a tablespoon or two and put that back in a pot. Now we have to add the vegetables. So I have one yellow onion. And I have some organic multicolored carrots because I just think it adds a real brightness to it. They all taste the same, but it's just nice to add that. You can add button mushrooms if you want. I usually save the mushrooms for the more savory burgundy style stew, but this is really good. And cut red potatoes skin on, keep those nutrients on, makes life a lot easier too. So we're going to stir this all around in those two tablespoons of the fat that we got from there. Now, after the meat braises and it sits after four hours and it sits for another hour, you're going to find the meat literally, I'm not kidding you, I just took this out, falls off the bone. So then you're going to take the short ribs and you're going to break it up. And this makes it so much easier for your guests so they don't necessarily have the bone to worry about. You've got to be careful with these bones now. They've been cooked, not only seared, but now again they've been cooked. So we don't want to give them to a dog because they always say if you've cooked the bones two times, it's too soft. So just unfortunately you're going to have to throw them out or you can gnaw them yourself. So we're going to add all that meat and then we're going to add the juice that's been separated from the fat because there's nothing worse than taking too much fat in that. We're going to give it a good stir. We're going to add some fresh thyme to this, a pinch more salt and pepper, and you can keep adjusting the taste as it stews, so to speak. And we'll put in that last little bit of the marinade that we had. We're going to cover this tightly for 30 minutes, and the vegetables and the meat are going to marry together. And it's time for lunch in just a few minutes. If you're trying to balance caring for your mother and being a mother to your children, we can help. It's what we do. Call Granny Nannies today. A helping hand and a gentle heart. ABC 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you weeknights at 5. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. 
For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. My dad is my hero, and I wanted to give him a chance to live life and be happy. Granny Nannies has been a huge help. It has contributed to the health and happiness of my dad, for sure. A helping hand and a gentle heart. So temperatures continuing to rise on the Sun Coast. Looking at a, a daytime high today that will probably top out another mm, mm, three, four degrees warmer than we are right now. 83 degrees, the current air temperature. Dew point, though, is nice and low, 58. Dew points in the 50s like that. Like it more if it were in the mid-50s. We might get there a little bit later in the week. Winds are up as well, that helping to kind of take the edge off those above-average daytime highs. East wind now coming in at about 15, gusting higher. High-pressure ridge bringing fair weather for the most part, all up and down the eastern seaboard state of Florida, a lot of the deep south. You go back to the west, though, that's not really the case there. The southern part of the western deep south seeing showers and thunderstorms ongoing. It's going to be a pretty wet couple of days, I think, for New Orleans, parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas, Nebraska, all seeing showers today, all lined up with this cold front that's advancing toward the east. As it does that, I think we'll probably see the inflow of Gulf moisture producing showers and thunderstorms from about a line Tampa Bay northward for the most part. And I think these will continue to kind of drift off to the north and to the east and lessen in intensity over the next two days. So I think as that front gets closer to us on Wednesday night, it'll have about a 20% chance of producing a shower for us. That's my thinking now. Now, some computer models, I will tell you, are continuing to show a wetter scenario on Wednesday night. Other computer models, not so much. But I think that's probably a safe choice right now. We have the right to reserve uh, a little adjustments to that forecast over the next 24 hours, but that's the way it's looking. One thing that I'll tell you, though, is that after that front moves through, we will get another reinforcing shot of drier air, so this beautiful low dew point air is going to stay with us for a while. Also might lower our temperature a few degrees as well. Won't be an Arctic blast, but it'll help out. Today, sun cloud mix, a warm afternoon, but still dry skies and low relative humidity. So nice afternoon, I think. We do have a couple of showers that'll pop up, I think, over on the other coast because of that strong onshore flow, though locally everything is dry and will remain that way. Looking at wind gusts, though, they're pretty impressive out of the northeast, coming in at about 10 to 15 most everywhere across the sun coast, and that'll be the case, I think, for the next day or two. We'll have those strong, gusty winds, and I think Thursday the winds might even be stronger. And you see the effect of those onshore winds with a few of the showers trying to work their way into our area. I don't think they're going to have much of a chance of doing that that if we see any rainfall it'll be from that approaching front and there you'll see it reflected in my extended range forecast on Wednesday night east northeast wind at about 15 to 20 extended range forecast showing that chance of showers on Wednesday night breezy as well with the front coming through and temperatures lowering dew points staying low nice and sunny into the weekend Scott all right, John, thank you. It's been a busy year for auto recalls. Justin McFarlane has a few of the latest makes and models that need to go back to the dealership in this edition of Take It Back. We began this all auto edition of Take It Back with the Toyota Prius. 92,000 of them are being recalled because of a defect with the parking brakes, causing them to suddenly disengage, then the car can just roll away. Models made from August of 2015 through October of 2016 are being recalled. If you have one, please take it back to Toyota. Honda is recalling 350,000 Honda Civics because of parking brake problems of their own. The company says a software glitch may prevent the electronic brakes from engaging in some cases. The problem affects some of the 2016 Honda Civic coupes and sedans. If you drive one, do it carefully and take it back to the dealership.
Fiat Chrysler's recalling police cars and pickups because they could stall or catch fire. The recalls for several models of the 2007 to 2013 Ram pickups and the 2011 to 2014 Charger police cars. A part of the alternator can short circuit and cause the vehicles to stall or even catch fire. Owners who are affected will get a recall notice in the mail next month. For Take It Back, I'm Justin McFarland. Justin, thanks. Entertainment News is next. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. ABC7 is proud to present Line Dance Central. Now you can learn popular country and not-so-country line dances from the comfort of your own home. Just visit mysuncoast.com, click on entertainment, and you'll be kicking up your boots or flip-flops in no time. Brought to you by the White Buffalo Saloon and Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. So many possibilities worth exploring. Manasota flooring. And for a limited time, Minnesota Flooring is offering you unbelievable pricing on tile and laminate. Porcelain tile, only $1.59. Ceramic tile, 99 cents. And 16 by 16 tile, $1.19. Laminate flooring is only 99 cents. But these prices won't last. Don't miss out on these great deals. Hurry into Minnesota Flooring today. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com Enjoy fine wine, craft beer, and delicious foods, all while supporting a great cause at the 15th Annual Suncoast Food and Wine Festival, Saturday, November 12th, from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample cuisine from the area's finest restaurants. Watch live cooking demonstrations from local chefs and take part in a silent auction to bid on creative prize packages that will delight any foodie or wine connoisseur. The event will feature live music by Kettle of Fish. There's free parking and all proceeds benefit a variety of local charities and Rotary Club projects. Don't miss this year's Suncoast Food and Wine Festival. Saturday, November 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. For tickets and information, visit suncoastfoodandwinefest.com. Well, John, a little That's different tasty. style. You like that? So mm. it's got some kick to it, mm -hmm. a little bite. Delicious. Marrying the tomato paste with all those different herbs. Mm. And I think the apple cider just gives it that punch. And I think we need a punchy dish tomorrow night while we're watching the results. What do you think? i tell you what. It is going to be pins and needles. That's for sure. Indeed. They, um, I really like the root vegetables, too. I've always liked roast root vegetables. Oh, anything well, with root vegetables. I love them. You know, my mom always put peas in her beef stew, so you can even mm -hmm. throw in some peas. Oh, good. Bring, but you put the peas in at the very last moment. Now, technically, is this, is this uh, braised or roasted? It techni well, it, technically, it's both because <laughs> we cooked it in this slow and low oven for four hours, mm -hmm. and then we braised the vegetables and pulled the meat off the bone. So I would say it's, it's, a, little uh, of both. it's a little of both, buddy. Well, it sure worked out. Recipe on our website, mysuncoast.com. Judy, thanks again. A home run one more time. <laughs> Thank you. Scott? 
Thank you both. Brad Pitt is seeking joint custody of his six children in his divorce from Angelina Jolie Pitt. The actor's request is included in his response filed Friday to his estranged wife's petition to end their two-year marriage. Jolie Pitt sought sole physical custody of their six children, who range in ages from 8 to 15. The actors were together for 12 years after becoming close while filming 2005's Mr. and Mrs. Smith. The filing was first reported Friday by the celebrity website TMZ. And a strong batch of new films drew audiences to the theaters over the weekend as the superhero in the bunch, Doctor Strange, well, it easily dominated with $85 million at the box offices in North America. Trolls is an animated musical featuring the voices of Anna Kendrick and Justin Timberlake. It's a second place with nearly $46 million. And then in third place, Hacksaw Ridge. That's the story of the, the true story of Desmond Doss's heroics during the Battle of Okinawa during World War II. It earned $15 million at the box office. So some good movies to see this weekend. Good. Uh, yeah. I think I've got that idea on my mind for the next for this weekend. Movie time. Movie. Yeah. yeah. It's been a while since we've had some some really good movies. That's out. what I'm yeah. thinking. Yeah. Have a wonderful day ahead, everyone. See you at five.